Another good property to use for mineral identification is streak. Streak is defined as the color of a mineral's powder. Not the color of a mineral, but of its powder. You figure out the color of its powder by putting it on what's known as a streak plate, which is just a ceramic tile. So here's a piece of hematite on a streak plate. Hematite can be sort of silvery looking, it could be reddish, there's all sorts of different colors of hematite. It's the streak, however, that tells you that it's hematite. You streak it and you'll find that the color is always a reddish brown color. Red should make you think of blood. Blood should make you think of hemoglobin. Hemoglobin, hematite, yes, not a coincidence. Some dark minerals will have a light streak. For example, sphalerite, uh, which is the ore of zinc, has a light yellow streak. You could either use a dark tile or easier, just take a look at the powder itself and you'll notice that it has a very light yellow color despite it's the color of the uh, mineral. A great way to tell gold from fool's gold. Let's look at the streak. The streak of gold is uh, gold. The streak of fool's gold is gray. The luster. We're going to divide all minerals into two groups. One is metallic and the other is non-metallic lusters. Now, it sounds easy. If it looks like a metal, it must be metallic. But it does take a bit of uh, experience looking at things to realize the difference between metallic and simply shiny. As you might guess, silver is metallic. Let's take a look at a few more examples. Stibnite, galena. They do look shiny, but shiny in a metal kind of way, not like glass is shiny. It doesn't have to be silvery. It could be a gold luster. Or here we have pyrite, fool's gold. However, here's a shiny mineral, but it's shiny like glass is. We call that vitreous, which is another word for glassy. So olivine, the mineral uh, olivine, has one form called peridot, a birthstone, and that looks like green glass, vitreous luster. Quartz would be an obvious example. Here are some others. That looks like glass, but remember, it doesn't have to be clear, it has to simply look glassy. It could be a silky luster, like asbestos, pearly. Could be dull or earthy, which means it just looks dull, <laughs> looks like dirt. Resinous, it looks like resin, it looks like it would be kind of waxy and weird. Or graphite. Graphite could be called metallic, it's, or sometimes it's called submetallic. Uh, it's also very soft. Otherwise, we would never use it in our pencils. It's graphite's a single cleavage plane, which is microscopic, just like talc, and uh, that allows it to be used as the graphite or, quote, lead in our pencils. The luster may not be obvious if the rock has been weathered. Many metals in a rock will quickly weather into other substances. So with this piece of native copper is covered with copper oxide and you can't tell that it's copper or metallic at all. But if you buff it up, you get that nice shiny metallic luster. The moral of the story is always look at a fresh surface if you want to find out the most about a rock. So if you can, smash the rock open color of the rock or the mineral is probably one of the worst indicators there is. For most basically light minerals, a very, very small amount of a substance will totally change its color. All of these are calcite. Doesn't matter what color it is. I have many forms. I'm going to fool you with calcite. You've got to learn calcite not by its color, but by its other characteristic properties. Same thing with quartz. If there are no impurities in quartz, it looks nice and clear and glassy. But you add just a tiny bit of other things and you get all these other forms of quartz like amethyst and rose quartz and citrine. That being said, there are a few minerals for which the color is an indication of its identity. Turquoise is always, yes, you guessed it, turquoise. 
sulfur is always yellow. Uh, many of the metal oxides like malachite um, and azurite, they are known by their color. So those you can trust. It's the minerals that could be clear that can totally fool you by having weird colors. The specific gravity of mineral is the mass of a mineral compared to a mass of equal volume of water. In other words, it's the density. Now, we could figure out specific gravity by massing a mineral in and out of water, but we're going to make it easier than that. We're going to divide all minerals into three categories, light, medium, and heavy. How's that for simple? There are many minerals that contain uh, metals that tend to be much heavier than other minerals. So when you pick them up, when you heft them, you can tell. And there are a few minerals that look like other minerals but are much lighter than you expect them to be. Of course, the heaviest mineral that you're likely to come in contact with is gold. It's 19.2 times heavier than the same volume of water. That's why you're able to pan for gold. When you pan for gold, you let the water push the less dense minerals, usually quartz, away leaving the dense gold behind. One property that I don't recommend using is taste. It's a surefire way to know whether you've got halite, because halite is salt. However, there are some minerals that are toxic, so if you decided you didn't know whether galena was halite or not and licked it, you'd be licking something with lead in it. Not a good idea. Or if you thought maybe that piece of calcite was halite, you might lick it and find that you licked a mineral that somebody else licked a while ago. The nice thing about licking true salt, however, is that it will kill your germs. Some minerals containing a lot of iron are magnetic, and the most magnetic of all the iron oxides is magnetite. Big surprise. So magnetite will attract a magnet. Easy way to find it. There are some forms of magnetite that are so magnetic that they actually are a magnet. They are called lodestone. They were the very first magnets ever used. Diaphaneity refers to how light goes through a mineral. There are three terms, transparent, translucent, and opaque. Now if I were talking about pa papers, I could say transparent would be something like saran wrap where translucent would be something like wax paper and opaque would be aluminum foil. Because through saran wrap, you can see light. You can actually see something behind it. You might not be able to read it perfectly, but you can definitely see objects in the light and dark. A translucent mineral allows some light to go through it. It will glow if there's a strong light behind it, but you can't really see anything through it whereas opaque lets no light through at all. Here we have a lovely transparent topaz. These are translucent and a particularly opaque piece of tourmaline. This is cool. Calcite, if you get a really perfect piece of calcite, it has double refraction. You see double through it. A piece that, that works this way is generally called an Iceland spar. Calcite is also easy to find because if you put dilute hydrochloric acid on it, it will bubble. The bubbles are uh, CO2 as it reacts with the HCl. Radioactivity. Well, we're not going to be dealing with a lot of uranium ore, but a Geiger counter would help you find that uranium ore is radioactive. Fluorescence. Some minerals looking perfectly normal in everyday light glow with wonderful colors in UV light. I would like to thank Glendare Community College. I uh, used most of their slides, used and abused them, and I would like to thank them for the fine PowerPoint that they've created. End of lecture.